Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Good morning, colleagues. Mr. Speaker, before I address the substantive um, motion in front of us, I just want to comment on two matters. Um, one has to um, deal with your pronouncements at our last sitting where you touted the achievements of Parliament. Um, but there is still this nagging issue, Mr. Speaker, where copies of Hansard cannot be made available and we have to rely on recordings. And you can well imagine the hustle it is to go through a recording to try to identify, you know, um, a, 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 something that was said. So I, I'm hoping that, you know, we could see some significant improvement in that aspect of it. But I commend you on the... If I can just respond yes. right away. We have written <clears throat> to the Office of the Prime Minister for the establishment of a separate hand salary, um, what do you call the transcribing unit? And I think we are getting some positive response, so we will be able to update the hand sides. But if you need a specific um, report, we can get it transcribed for you. Thank you. Yeah, Mr. Speaker, because I wanted to remind, you know, the Honorable Prime Minister on a matter that, um, you know, he had, he, when, we, when we had first brought the, the draft of the health and security levy for general observation and discussion, one of the um, recommendations that I brought forward to him was the whole issue of recognizing the sanitary um, napkins, how important it was to, to include it as one of the exempt items. And I was very happy that he did it Mr. Speaker, and you know, sometimes, you know, I don't like blowing my own, but just give me my kudos when, when they come. Thank you. Um, Mr. Speaker, the other thing the Prime Minister said in his opening remarks, and he has continually said it, but there's a misleading item to it, a, a misleading part of it, where he continues to say that he provides resources to the members opposite. In fact, in one, one um, news item I read that he said, um, I provide the necessary resources to the members opposite. And while it is true, Mr. Speaker, and my, my colleague from Denry North continuously reminds me that he served for six years and he did not get a cent. He continues to remind me, so he tells me I need to be grateful, you know. And he continuously reminds me whenever I said to him, but the Prime Minister is misleading when he gives the impression because the people in my community believe that I am receiving similar resources like the members of, of, of cabinet. And they, I get a lot of pressure because they, they, they say that I get work and I, and, I, and I send it back. So I want to set the record straight, you know, that while I'm appreciative, appreciative of what, what comes, Mr. Speaker, but it's misleading to give the general impression that we are getting um, the necessary resources to do work in our community. Mr. Speaker, I move to the, I move, I move to the, the substantive discussion. Yes, I get hundred thousand dollars a quarter. That's a lot. I got zero. That's four hundred thousand a year. Mr. Speaker, I move on. That's four. Mr. Speaker, there's one thing that we agree on on both sides of the house. There is one thing I agree on. We agree on on both sides of the house, Mr. Speaker, and that is water is life. We agree that water is life, and I believe Wasco has been an unfair tar target by many St. Lucians. Um, and I also believe, Mr. Speaker, that Wasco has suffered even significant, greater challenges since Hurricane Thomas. And you know, this is thing that we need to be, uh, um, um, recognize, Mr. Speaker. But my colleague to my direct left, Mr. Speaker, and I must say, you know, he looks very striking in his colors today. <laughs> you know, colors of, uh, he tried to represent the colors of Wasco, but he needs deeper. <laughs> A deeper blue, um, but and, and we get along quite well, Mr. Speaker, because you know we have various similarities in our socializing, Mr. Speaker. Um, but Mr. Speaker, he, he said something, and I just I just want for the records because when the when the Prime Minister referred to the the Passion's water supply project in um, last city, and something I remembered a similar discussion 
when, when um, we were in office. Um, because I remember when the Parsians project was mentioned, there was a discussion about um, feral pigs, Koshomawon, and the damage that it does to the various catchment areas. And I remember because I asked permission then if I could go and hunt um, some of these Koshomawon. Um, so I remember, and I remember Mr. Speaker very distinctly, and that's why I had to get it. Um, a press release that was released on Wednesday, November 18th, 2020, to the Patience Water Upgrade. And Mr. Speaker, for your permission, I will just. Residents of Patience will have their water wells addressed mm -hmm. with the soon to be commissioned water project in the community. Less than one year ago, on November 25th, 2019, to be exact, officials from Wasco and the St. Lucia Social Development Fund. SSDF held a contract signing ceremony for the Pastions Mikud Water Supply Improvement Project. The scope of the project included the replacement of a 50,000 gallon water tank with a 100,000 gallon yes, tank and repairs to the water tank at Noba as well as some drainage work. The project was promised by the parliamentary rep for Mikud North, Honorable De Dr. Gail Rigobert. To date, works have been completed to on the Lomba tank the old one was demolished and a new 100,000 gallon tank erected and the necessary connections are now in place. Repairs on the existing 50,000 gallon tank included a replacement of faulty sheets and thorough cleaning of the tank. The, the resurfacing of the access road to the lumber tank site was also part of the project and has since been completed with only the drainage works now outstanding. Mr. Speaker, I speak to that because you know, the, while the, the member indicated that some work had started, it, it, it was very fleeting in his no, comment, you know. And, 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 you know, I'm always intrigued when we speak about Wasco and the providing water because, and the reason I'm intrigued, Mr. Speaker, because, you know, we're in 2023, and you, you would think that this is one of the basic things that, you know, um, must be provided and must be, you know, you know, identified by various governments to ensure that, you know, our population does not have that. Because, Mr. Speaker, if anything, water is one of the things that touch the very lives, the souls of every single resident. And maybe one day, maybe one day, um, we will, we will identify. And I'm not just talking about, you know, anybody that we, we seem to have really. And I, I've spoken about it on several occasions to speak the amount of poverty in our country. But maybe one day we'll be able to identify the people who truly cannot pay water and wasco and provide maybe a limit. And you know, that could be one of the subsidies that government can, can, can you know, um, provide to some of these very, very vulnerable families, Mr. Speaker. Because you know, it is, it is, it is downright shame, crying shame that in, in, in 2023, there are people who are without running water as a result of not being able to pay a WASCO bill. And I speak to the very poor and vulnerable people who really have no means, you know, Mr. Speaker. So I'm hoping that that day will come, Mr. Speaker. But Mr. Speaker, <coughs> I spoke to some of the challenges that WASCO has. And um, just before demitting office, Mr. Speaker, um, we wrote to um, BNTF under the 10th um, um, program, Mr. Speaker, to identify a 100,000 gallon tank for Victoria Chozel. And um, the, the grant was approved, but to date, um, you know, we're still without that tank. I have noticed that the platform has been erected, and I'm hoping that that tank will be in place before the next dry season, Mr. Speaker because that tank is supposed to benefit at least 13 communities in, in, in the constituency of Shuzel Saltibus. And now that I've mentioned Saltibus, Mr. Speaker, I took personal responsibility to visit the catchment in the Saltibus area and recognize that it's a catchment that is no longer, it has served its time, Mr. Speaker. And we, I, I, I felt, that we need to identify another place where we could 
harvest that water to provide to the people of Saldivas. And I took it on my own. I invited um, staff of Wasco along with members of the community. And we trekked upriver, Mr. Speaker, to a place called Wavin Mabet. I'm sure the fittest of you all here may not be able to reach that area, Mr. Speaker. It was a very um, difficult trek, but we recognized, and the time we did that, Mr. Speaker, it was, in dry, it was in the dry season, and we identified an area, Mr. Speaker, where you would think that we were in the rainy season, and Wasco was there. They were asked to, you know, look at the feasibility, and I'm really hoping, you know, that, you know, government could provide the necessary resources, um, seek the necessary grants to really improve on the, the, the salty bus um, water supply, Mr. Speaker. Because for an area that lies within, you know, the water belt in the forest area, it's a crying shame that, you know, we cannot um, get the necessary water supply as required. In fact, if we were able to tap in that new area, Mr. Speaker, I can assure you that that water may serve as far as, as library um, because of what was um, indicated by the engineers and the other WASCO personnel that accompanied us. Mr. Speaker, I also want to speak because sometimes, you know, we, we speak to some of the things that are done when various governments are in office, but we seem to breeze over very important things that, 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 that have been um, accomplished. The last administration spent over $4.5 million in replacing pipes along the Grosley Highway at the same time that we had started the construction of the, um, the, the section in, in, in Rodney Bay there, Mr. Speaker. And that also delayed the, 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 the roadworks. And I can tell you, Mr. Speaker, we spent about about $2.5 million in purchasing pipes and about the contract to lay down these pipes was in the region of about $2 million, Mr. Speaker. And I think that's a project that we have to look at island-wide because you look, Mr. Speaker, in fact, I experience in Schozel where Wasco pipes continuously burst in the very same area time and time again. They dig up the road, they fix it. Within a week, that same area, Mr. Speaker, is compromised. I'm not sure why. I cannot, you know, I'm speak to it. I don't work at Wasco. But I think Wasco needs to come out and comprehensively speak about some of these challenges that they have. I know the former minister responsible for Wasco had discussions with the government of Cuba, I think it was where we identified a particular um, material that was being used to construct water pipes, the four-inch pipes. And I think there was supposed to have been some arrangement to bring down some of these pipes so that it could replace our overall pipe network. And I'm hoping that the government will con this government will continue to pursue that avenue because the, the rusty pipes that we have supplying us with water, you know, their, their, their time has, has long passed. So, Mr. Speaker, there's no doubt that you know, a project like that is welcomed by both, both sides, welcomed by the entire population of St. Lucia. And um, you know, I want to say we need more, we need more of these type of projects. Um, sometimes I, I wonder, and I speak to the mentality of both sides in terms of our supporters, whether you know, some of these projects are not sexy enough to, 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 to guarantee you know, a, a, a seat in the next in the next elections, and whether people people um, want a little, you know, you know the saying, "Give a man a fish or a fish or teach him to fish." Whether that is more of a priority in terms of, of of how how voters look at things, Mr. Speaker. But you know, things like that, Mr. Speaker, are very important, especially in the age that we're living in. And I'm looking forward to more things like that that will strike at the very heart of our households, particularly. The, the, the vulnerable. With that being said, Mr. Speaker, I thank you. Thank you. Thank you.